Hey parents, this is Glenn Arnold. I'd like to welcome you to Chemistry at the STEM Academy, um, or as I will often refer to it um, in hashtags on Twitter and stuff as uh, hashtag STEM Chem. Um, and then if you fo follow me on Twitter, you'll occasionally see some pictures of uh, students doing some pretty, what I think is some pretty cool stuff um, in chemistry there. Um, on this first page here, I just want to just let you know that this is all my contact info, um, email address, I think everybody will know. Um, my Twitter handle is there if you want to follow. Um, it's not all about school, um, but there's definitely are some things about school. Um, and then there's a short URL here to my YouTube channel, which as you'll see as we walk through some of the other stuff will be really important, um, particularly for students, but parents might also be important um, for you as well. Um, these are the three classes that I'm teaching this year. Um, and so uh, I'm going to just sort of briefly go over an overview of each of those things. Um, what's what's the same about each of them and how I'm going to teach each of them differently just so you have some idea of what to expect um, and to know where to get help and all of that. I will say just as a default, um, if you're ever confused, just shoot me an email. Um, I'm usually pretty quick on the emails. I know that our school sort of has a policy that you don't have to respond immediately necessarily um, because we all do have lives um, just as you all do, um, but I'm usually pretty quick with it. So shoot me an email and I will respond back pretty quickly to that. So. Um, chemistry. Um, chemistry 1, um, whether it's honors or CP, you'll, you'll see here in a second that that's largely going to be the same. Um, I run what's called a fully flipped classroom. I've got a whole separate video on that to explain the process, but essentially the idea is that um, you're going to watch a video um, lecture at home, and you'll, they're relatively short, um, usually anywhere from about 5 to maybe 12, 13 minutes. Um, on a topic, and then when you come into class the next day, we will discuss that topic and we'll talk about it. Um, we'll do work on it. We'll work labs and all those things. Um, so that's what a flipped classroom means. Um, and just really briefly, I don't want to belabor this, but but the rationale behind that is that I want to have more face-to-face -face time with students. Um, I want you to get help from me. Chemistry can be a tough subject, um, and so I don't want to assign you homework where you have to go home and work problems and then you get confused. Um, I instead I want you to do the, the what we would call low cognitive load stuff, which is take the notes on stuff at home, and then come into class where we can discuss it, um, you can learn more about it with your peers, and we can actually work through the problems together with me and with one of my assistants in the room. Um, so that being the case, students have to watch videos outside of class time. They're not going to have class time to watch it. Um, if, if they didn't get to watch it at home, or if, if you don't have Wi-Fi or something like that, please talk to me. We can arrange something else. I've got a lot of stuff on jump drives. Um, but also, most of the students are school early, or they can do it during some of their Monday uh, science lab time. Um, Grading-wise, this is always what parents want to know about. Um, I grade on what's called a standards-based grading system. And what, what that means is that I'm going to grade your student on what they know, not necessarily on how hard they work. Now, it doesn't mean that hard work isn't necessary, uh, but what it means is that you have to know the content. Um, and that's what I'm going to test you on. Um, in general... Um, I don't grade a lot of homework other than to check and see that you're prepared to take an assessment. Um, most of what I grade in Chemistry 1 are going to be labs, group projects in class, um, and assessments that we'll take in class. Um, so when you do, do what would traditionally be homework, working practice problems and stuff, you're going to be working those in class in groups, and I'm going to check them in class, but they're not going to count for your grade. What counts for your grade is the assessments that you take um, and how well you do on those. Um, and I'll come to this uh, red box here in a second because we're going to come back to that. Um, along with the standard-based grading thing, for almost all of the assessments, I offer retakes. Um, in the past, I've usually offered two or three retakes. I found that that's not, A, not necessary and really is sort of um, a counter-incentive for a lot of students that if they have too many retakes, they don't tend to take the first assessment very seriously. So our policy this year is going to be that there's going to be one retake for every assessment. So you take an assessment in class. My assessments are usually pretty short. They'll take anywhere from like 4 to 15 minutes usually. Um, and if, if you don't do well on it, my, my assumption is that if you make less than a C on it, um, that you're going to retake it. Um, and the retake, so when can you retake them? Well, that's what the red box here is for. Um, I'm usually in the classroom almost every morning before school for an hour and a half or so. Um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays are my dedicated time to say, hey, between 8.15 and 9.15, Please show up and do retakes, get tutoring help, studying, whatever. If you're going to come in for tutoring, um, this is a big deal for me. If you're going to come in for tutoring, this goes for any class, not just Chem 1, you need to know what you need help on specifically, and I will have expected you to watch the video before you come in. 
If you say, hey, I need help with electron configuration, my qu first question to you is going to be, did you watch the two videos on electron configuration? If your answer is no, I'm going to tell you to watch those first and then come back and get the help, okay? Because otherwise, you're just wasting both of our times um, in that case. And there's usually a lot of students that need help. Um, and so I want to make sure that I'm, I'm using that time efficiently for all of them. Um, the next bullet point here um, is that I'm a big believer, um, and one of the things we're going to change a little bit this year is we're going to do what I call targeted self-paced learning. What that means is that I'm going to set things up in class so that you can work ahead, um, or that if you're maybe struggling a little bit, that you can actually work a little bit slower. There will be weekly and daily targets that you have to meet, and there'll be logs that you fill out to that effect. Um, but you're going to be able to work within a time frame um, to get stuff done. That also means that if you're if you're an accelerated student or a real self-driven learner and you want to work ahead, um, that's great. I've done this in the past. And I've had students that have been about three to four weeks ahead of uh, the rest of the class. That's great. I want to encourage you to do that. Um, the other th the big thing about Chem 1 is that um, we do what we call heterogeneous classes, which means there's not a separate CP class and a separate honors class that we teach CP and honors together. Um, and that I teach everything the same. Um, the assessments are different, and there are occasionally uh, some extra projects and some extra um, more in-depth um, assignments for the honors students. Um, the reason that we do this is because I want every student, CP or honors, to get the full experience. Um, and if you're a CP student, if you've been slotted into CP, if you're a middle school science teacher or maybe math teacher, thought that you would struggle in chemistry, or, or your high school teacher for that matter, and you're in the CP section, you can earn your way up to the honors section. Last year... Um, within the six chem sections that we had, I believe that we had around 12 or so students earn their way up to the honors section. And how would you do that? Well, you do the honors work, you take the honors level assessments, we get to the nine weeks or the semester, and, and through teacher approval, we will say, hey, great, this kid needs to be in honors. Um, and it, usually if you're somewhere in that range that I feel like that's going to be doable for you, I will encourage that and sort of suggest that to you to make sure that you're going to be able to do that. Um, okay, so that, that wraps up most everything for um, Chem 1. Chances are Chem 1 is where I'm going to get the most questions from parents. Um, hopefully this answered most of your questions. If you have any more, please feel free um, to shoot me an email. Um, and by the way, most of the videos will be shorter than this parent video. Okay, so hopefully that will keep kids' attention a little bit more. All right, um, AP Chem, Honors Chem 2. I'm going to run through this pretty quickly because if you signed up for this, hopefully you know what you're getting into, but as a parent, you might want to know um, what's going on a little bit more. Um, all the tutoring help, um, all that stuff is the same. There are no retakes in AP Chem. Um, AP Chem is a college-level class. Um, you can get college credit out of it. I think if I remember my scores correctly from last year, I had about 14, 15 students um, that will get college credit if they go to UT or uh, most colleges, not all, um, but most that got their college credit um, through the class. Um, that's not the only goal for it, but that is possible. But that means that it's college level. I have college level expectations. I'm going to teach at a really high level. It's going to be, I would say, probably the hardest class your student will take um, in high school. AP Chemistry is brutal. You'll see that it says AP Chemistry Honors Chem 2. You've got to take both classes to take AP Chem. Um, they technically get separate grades, but I treat them all the same, and what I do is I just alternate the grades between each class. So if Lab 1 went into AP Chem, Lab 2 goes into Honors Chem, and they'll just sort of get um, rotated in that way. The only thing that goes in the day-to-day -day, um, a little differently are daily quizzes. Um, it's not flipped, although I am making videos. In fact, I'm at the point that I'm recording this video here in early July, I've already got a couple of AP Chem videos up, so um, there will be some. Um, I want you to really remember as you're suffering through a couple of things. First off, it's normal parents. I want you to read this part here. It's normal for grades and honors chem 2 um, and AP chem to be lower than they normally are. I would say anywhere from 5 to 10 points lower than what your student normally gets. So if your student is a, you know, a 90 student normally, they're probably going to be around the 85 range. And remember that they get bonus points added in for honors and AP classes. Um, at the end of the year. So don't panic too bad. Um, that isn't to say that if your student is is performing way lower than normal, you know, if they're normally a, you know, a 95 student and they're getting down in the 75s, yeah, that's cause for concern and we probably need to email and have a conversation about that. Um, but their grades are going to be lower. It's tough. It's probably normally a letter grade lower. Um, at least it's going to carry that way throughout most of the year. Um, remember that the ultimate goal here is that you're going to be good at chemistry in college. 
Um, yes, it's great if you can skip college chem, but my goal is not that. My goal is to make you really competent in college level chemistry so that when you do go to college, if you take college chem or if you don't and you jump straight into organic, that you're really good at chemistry and particularly that you're really good at nonlinear thinking and problem solving. Um, that's the point of this class. Um, so if your only goal was that, you know, hey, I'm taking this class because I want to raise my GPA, um, then I would recommend student and parents, you might reconsider and take another class. Um, AP Chem doesn't always end up in A's for every student. All right, um, last class, and then we'll talk a little bit about Canvas and Aspen really quickly. Um, Autos, Organic, and Biochemistry. So in the past, this has been an intro level class, a CP level class. And what I felt was that I wasn't getting a lot of students that were really into organic and really they were taking it for the right reasons, i.e. I'm taking organic chemistry in college. Um, so it's an honors level class this year. Um, it's not going to be AP level hard, but it's definitely going to be hard. And the content just in organic chemistry is hard anyway. Um, it will be what I'd like to call partially flipped. Um, there's already about 21, 22 videos done for organic. There will be more throughout the year, but organic, unlike um, Chem, Chem 1, um, the content level is so difficult that there will be a lot of in-class discussion in small groups and working through those problems. So it's partially flipped but not fully. The second bullet point says that um, there will be small groups working on different things in class. Um, part of that is because of our lab constraints. Um, a lot of organic labs, unlike AP or Chem 1 labs, um, really need to be done in the fume hood for safety. And so only a couple of students at a time can really be in that fume hood. And so we'll sort of rotate um, lab groups in and out. Um, on a daily basis, probably starting the second or third week of, of school, will be there'll be constantly be students doing lab. And so that means one group might be doing lab, one group's working problems, and I'm talking to another group sort of discussing um, some other stuff, or maybe they're working on some video projects for me. Um, grading tests, which there are limited retakes. Um, that means that it's possible to retake a test or retake parts of the test, but it's not quite like Chem 1. I don't give these short little assessments. I tend to give sort of bigger um, unit tests maybe once a month or so. Um, and then there's a lot of projects and quizzes and labs that we'll do. I, I require students in organic to make a lot of videos to explain things because I want to hear their thought process. Um, I want to see, I want to visualize that. I want to be able to hear them talk about, hey, this is how this mechanism works. So um, that's our Honors Organic and Biochem. I'm really excited about that, that, that class this year. I've got a, the biggest class we've ever had, so I'm really, really enthused about that. Um, real quick, this is mostly for parents. Most of the kids will know how this works pretty quickly, except for the freshmen. Um, so we have two systems that we use um, that parents are going to sort of be able to follow their students on. So there's Canvas and there's Aspen. Um, Canvas is probably the most important thing because that's where the assignments are. All the assignments are there. The videos are there. It's where I check off the classwork. It's where you're going to submit most of your assignments. Um, so that is really key. And Canvas will look like this. You can see it there on the screen. That's a sample of the Canvas page from a couple of years ago. Um, here's what Canvas is not, though. Canvas is not the official record of grades. Any grades that you see in there, the grades for the individual assignments are correct. But the grade average, it doesn't work that way because all of our, our official grading system is in Aspen. Um, so if you see that your student has a C in Canvas but an A in Aspen, Aspen's what matters. Okay, You can look at Canvas to see what they've turned in and what they haven't and what assignments are upcoming and all that stuff, but that's not the official grade. Um, can, what Canvas is um, also is going to be a little different this year is uh, I'm going to fully integrate it with Google Classroom this year. So a lot of the assignments will get, be getting pushed out, yes, maybe in Canvas, but definitely through Google Classroom. And the students will be submitting and doing a lot of work in Google because um, the collaborative power of Google Documents and stuff is just really powerful. Um, collaboration is one of our, our STEM habits, and, and I believe really strongly um, and having them do a lot of group work in a productive fashion. And I, I promise you, parents and students now, um, that I believe very strongly in not just throwing group work out there um, and then counting that grade for all the students when one kid did most of the work. Um, I will get to the bottom of that, and I will fix that. Um, those students that don't want to work in a group, they're still going to have to work in a group. They're going to have to work in a group together of students that don't want to work in a group. Um, uh, so we'll get that taken care of. So the question might be, um, where are the actual grades then? So the actual grades are in Parent Portal um, in Aspen. Um, Parent Portal is something that if you don't already know about, um, if you talk to, this, um, to the office staff in the front office, they'll get you set up on Parent Portal so that you can access your student grades all the time. 
I usually try to be pretty good about updating grades weekly. Usually Sunday afternoon, Sunday evenings is when grades are probably going to go in. These are the official grades, and they get updated in real time. You don't have to wait a day for them to roll up or anything like that. They will be there um, immediately. Um, you can also set up as a student or a parent notifications. Um, you know, if, if a grade of a certain you know low level goes in or whatever, I'll be honest with you. I kind of encourage you as a parent to um, allow your student a little bit of leeway in that way. Um, I find that a lot of students probably tend to work a little bit better if they know that they're not being monitored constantly. Um, you should definitely check in on those grades, but you know, once a week is probably sufficient. Um, and then if you've got some issues there, um, shoot me an email. Actually. Before you shoot me an email, talk to your student about it, and then shoot me an email, um, and we'll discuss that. And we can discuss it by email, and then if we end up needing to have a face-to-face, -face, that's great, too. I, I actually would much rather speak face-to-face -face a lot of times, um, but we can get a lot done with email as well. Um, so hopefully um, all of those things um, answered most of your questions. Again, if you have other questions, um, my email is glenn.arnold at knoxschools.org. And I would also encourage you to remember this red box. This is really the important part um, here, that I'm in the room in the mornings. Um, I'm never here after school, um, but in the mornings I'm pretty much there. You know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are my official days. If you need me to be there on a Monday, Friday morning, um, I'm usually doing lab prep then. But if, if there's a special circumstance, I could probably manage that as well. And of course, um, we do um, lab sections on Monday. So your student will probably have a science lab section. Um, and in that time, yes, there's some teaching going on there as well, but that time is sort of specifically set aside for working on problems, um, doing videos, getting some face-to-face -face tutoring, um, all of those things are, are what science labs are for. Contrary to what the students might think, they're not there um, to play games. They're supposed to be doing active science work all the time then. Okay, hopefully that was useful to students and parents. I'm sorry for the length of the video, but there was a lot of stuff to cover. I wanted to make sure that everybody knew all of the important things about class they needed to. I look forward to uh, teaching each of you, and I look forward to meeting all the parents this year as well. Thanks, kiddos and parents.